one this from just kala today we continue our coverage of the top 3 tactics by various players played in the 44th chess olympiad however from today we move towards foreign players rather than just covering the indian players uh, which we have been doing so far today uh, i'll be covering the uzbekistan uh, uzbekistan player uh, abdul satar on other back and top 3 tactics that he employed remember that uzbekistan is the team that ultimately clinched the gold medal in the open category of the 44th chess olympiad and uh, abdul satar on other back is the best player uh, playing for uzbekistan with a live rating of more than 2700 um so yeah that's that's what we'll be covering in today's session let's dive straight into it here are three tactics that uh, abdul satar abdul satar on other back employed in his fantastic run in the 44th chess olympiad this is a game from uh, this is the position from round 4 of the olympiad where another back is playing uh, fabiano caruana from united states um as you can see it's approximately 43rd move and uh, you can see that uh, both the players are materially um, equal with a queen each um, a rook each um, however um, caruana is down by two pawns one one each on king on the king side and the queen side now you must we always uh, you know discard the importance of pawns in games but um, it's often you know it is often uh, overlooked how important these pawns are in any games especially when there are only rooks uh, or even less a material remaining on both sides so yes another back is up by two pawns and that's ultimately what will uh, you know help him in winning here as you can see the last move played by caruana was uh, queen to queen to c8 now here uh, two of another back pawns are hanging uh, g captures on h4 is a threat and queen captures on f5 is a threat obviously you cannot protect both i mean queen to g5 does protect both but it's not worth it the queen is beautifully poised in this battery so nonrek obviously this decides that okay i'm dying i might as well gain some material but he thinks lots and lots of moves ahead uh, he's up by two pawns already but he wants to widen that margin by three pawns and when you are um, when you are three pawns ahead uh, in an end game uh, where the opponent has three and you have six pawns that's just game over for you uh, game over for the opponent right so here another back uh, starts a series of exchanges and moves post moves mostly which um yeah which which will get him that extra rook and which will uh, win him the game ultimately so here h captures on g3 was played uh, he allows Garuana to capture this pawn on f5, which Garuana does. Queen captures on f5. Now the engine says that this was not the best move. Rook d7 was the best move, but obviously uh, Garuana is has 13 minutes of time and he's uh, he's pushing for a draw at least here because he knows he's two pawns down and he's playing against a world class player. So uh, he captures on f5. He he's like okay, I cannot lose more material, and this is exactly what uh, another record planned. So. uh after after queen captures captures on f5 rook to h4 was played uh preparing to push this up and like uh you know just uh trying to attack the queen here and as you can see that if the rook comes here and the queen is still here this pawn will fall sooner or later because there is no square that the queen can go to which will protect this pawn uh so here you may be caro on a uh played something like rook to a1 or uh, maybe get get the queen out of the way in advance but then this pawn is dying like you will just uh, waste another extra pawn so uh, he simply decides to grab up the pawn that caruana simply decides to grab the pawn that was uh, hanging for black a big threat on the third rank uh, which is like the sixth rank for for black so king captures on g3 rook to h5 as planned now um, caruana had planned this okay yeah we'll just put Uh, check the black king and um we will somehow protect the pawn for the pawn later on but here another back is like okay i'm up by material i don't need any of the, i don't i need the queens off my board asap as soon as possible so he offers a queen trade with a check a brilliant queen to g5 block blocking the check and checking the black king so 
So ultimately, four things is actually even if a queen comes here, you can simply exchange. So a <laughs> brilliant move on other part. Uh, obviously, Karuna says like, okay, you you do the exchanging part. I won't. I don't have the uh, metal to <laughs> exchange my to to exchange uh, queens. I won't be initiating the exchange. So queen to g4, but another back happily accepts the exchange. Queen captures on g4. King captures on g4. Rook to uh, g5 is checking the king, just troubling it a little bit. Uh, king to f4, and now rook captures on a5. Now this this position is completely winning for another back as on the on the queen side, uh, the pawn co composition is three for another back against one of Garuana, and on the king side, it's one versus one. But the rooks the rooks will eat. The rook can easily, the rook and the king can easily manage this end game. Um, so yeah, ultimately, Northern Republic does end up winning the game based on the uh, massive two-point advantage that he has in this end game. And so yeah, this is the, this this is what uh, this is what he had in mind. Northern Republic had in mind while uh, yeah, while playing this edge capture on G3. Moral of the lesson, <laughs> moral of the story is that. Never underestimate the significance of pawns in that game. Um, this moving on second tactic employed by uh, Abdul Satar on other back. This comes against the Indian grandmaster and the sensational player Bukesh T. It is round ten of the forty-four chess Olympiad, and Bukesh was had Bukesh had been having an unbeaten run so far. He drew the previous round. He drew his previous game in round nine with uh, Fakir Mohammad Yarav, but he had not lost any game. <laughs> Uh, little did he know that this was the game where he was going to lose. Um, it's a very simple move here. Uh, Bukesh was very low on time, as you can see. He just had 36 seconds on the clock, and the last move that he had played was knight to f3. Uh, this this was a textbook draw uh, if played perfectly by both the players. And now that was like doing fine on time as well as positionally as well as materially, but um, Bukesh was severely 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 low on time. Uh, so he had 36 seconds, and the last move he played was knight to f3. Now, I have, I have specifically hidden the move from this side, so because I want you guys to guess, take a second and guess what another red played here that just wins in the game. Um, uh, yeah, I'll just wait for a few seconds, or you guys can pause the video and uh, find the move that wins the game for another red. Another red is black. Remember that. Um, All right, so the, the move is basically it's it's a very simple move. Uh, basics of chess: just uh, fork as many pieces as you can. Look for long diagonals when the board is open, um, and make optimum use of the queen. So the move that was played, queen to b7. This this checks the white king as well as attacks the knight. There is no way that the black queen can uh, interfere with the check or save the knight. And this is just that you know. Uh, after the king moves anywhere, after the king moves, sorry, after the king moves anywhere, we just pick up the knight. We'll be up by a piece, and it will be winning in the same game. Uh, one queen, one one queen versus one queen, two pawns and one bishop against one queen and two pawns. That's just winning for another back someone of his metal. Anyways, Bukesh was losing on time, so even if he continued playing, he would have lost. But this this was the move. Uh, queen to b7. After which. Uh, Bukesh designed the game, and uh, Abdul Satar on other back became the first player to, in fact, the only player to defeat um, uh, Bukesh D in the 44th edition of the Chess Olympiad. Bukesh drew ultimately drew two games, uh, lost one against another back, and uh, won eight games. So yes, another back due to this amazing taking to the basics, just uh, looking for long diagonals, as you can, as you all know. This diagonal is the longest one, uh, along with this on the chessboard. You just have to keep looking for those, these these kinds of forks. Keep keep your eye on the long diagonals. Uh, keep keep your eyes on checks that might arise, and uh, a series of checks that might lead to some kind of some nasty situation that you can use to your advantage. Um, basically, confuse the opponent and just look out for any forks on the like long diagonals. Make optimum use of your queen. It's it's very rarely that uh, there are end games like this where the queens are still on the board, um, but when they are on the board, they are of optimum use because they have a lot of space to move in and they cover a lot lot of squares. Um, so yeah, this was the second tactic by 
by uh, Abdul Sadar Nadir back. Uh, finally, this is round 11 of the round 11 in the final round of the 44th Chess Olympiad. Uh, Abdul Sadar Nadir back is playing Anish Giri. Um, in the in the in this round, uh, Nadir back is white, and uh, this is move five. The Sicilian uh, defense was played by Anish Giri, and as you can see, the there have been exchanges on these two pawns, the, the C7 pawn for black and D2 pawn for white. So those pawns have been exchanged. And um, here, the last move that uh, Girish, Anish Giri plays is, is A6. Um, however, uh, Nadirwek makes a very, very peculiar move here, which is not uh, that uncommon at, at such, uh, such, a massive, such a big level, such an advanced level. But it is it is a move that it's peculiar to uh, a normal eye. Like for instance, I would never think of playing such an absurd move myself. But uh, Nadirbek sees that uh, the the queen side of the black black opponent is compromised because the pawn has been captured here, and he does not have real he does not he has already pushed this pawn as well. He does not really have much scope to castle queen side, um, whereas. Uh, White still holds the option to castle. Option to castle on either side he wishes to, uh, because all his pawns are very intact. However, he decides that since uh, Anish Kiri is not castling queen side anytime soon, he will have to castle king side if he does castle at all, which he should. <laughs> he is not Kramnik, <laughs> uh, who who was a big advocate of not castling, but yeah. So he decides to. Already start, uh, you know, putting his pieces in position to attack the king side of the opponent. So he plays a, a very peculiar move, which again I would not think of playing ever. Uh, rook to g1. Uh, just putting it here, uh, preparing it for the semi-open file. Uh, whenever the king castles, uh, the rook will already be on the same file as the king if the pawns are off the board, or if at least this pawn is off the board, then you can just you know make use of these squares because the pawn will be pinned. Very, very prudent and very calculative, very much uh, advanced move that, uh, that Nadirbek makes, uh, already preparing to launch an attack on the opponent. And he's, he follows this up by good moves. Uh, it's five, uh, you know, just <laughs> trying to cauterize any ideas of G4 that, uh, that Nadirbek might be having. But okay, fine, H3 and now we can push, push H5. The, um, Anish does not have this uh, F5 move because the knight blocks the pawn. Uh, yeah, it's it's three uh, G6, bishop to E3, bishop to G7, queen to E2. Now we are prepared to castle on the queen side because the king the rook has already moved. Uh, now the had no plans to castle on the king's side anyways. Let's be honest. Um, B5 starts. Anish Giri also starts pushing on the queen side because he knows that that's where uh, the white king is castling. And white king indeed does long castle, and now finally g4. You know, just trying to open up the uh, the king side. So basically, yeah, this was this was it. Ultimately, this game does end in a draw and not a win for uh, another back or an, an Ishkiri. But um, yeah, this is something that you might want to look at as well when you know that the opponent's uh, king is weakened already because of some pawn exchanges or the opening uh, choices that the opponent made. You can exploit that uh, that weakness where you still have all your options open. Um, so rook to g1, this was the move that that struck me the most. Uh, already preparing for uh, an attack on the king side, where most probably the king will be castling, or you prevent the king from castling. So yeah, that was that was those are the three tactics that uh, Abu Sattar and back employed in his uh, in his brilliant run of the 44th chess Olympiad. He did ultimately go on to win the gold with his teammates in the open category. Um, so yes, that was today's video. I hope you guys understood the tactic. Thank you very much for watching.